Hello, Art Thou Commander Xander. Thou'st remember it, so thou's nostalgia critic doesn't have to. Nor should you. In case you're wondering what's up with that intro, I'm delving into Romeo and Juliet, the timeless Shakespearean tragedy. And by golly, some of the acting in this in this movie is a bit of a tragedy. I'm sorry. I know it gets raves, I know it's getting like kids, and I know Rotten Tomatoes gave it a very high score. But if you go to movie clips, you'll see what I mean. So, with that and the fact that I've always wanted to review something Shakespearean, I'm going to delve into the 1968 version of Romeo and Juliet for your viewing pleasure. Wherefore art thou acting in this one? As we delve into Romeo and Juliet. Granted, for the movie, goes to Paramount. No, this is not for monetary purposes, YouTube. This is strictly for a review. As we start our... Tragedy in San Francisco. No, seriously, it's so foggy. You, you, you think it's San Francisco. Yeah, great. We get a nice panoramic view with nothing to see but dense fog. Okay, is this going to be another one of those movies where the narrator narrates stuff for me? From ancient grudge, break to new mutant. Oh look, this sign. The only glimmer of hope in this movie. Oh goody, sword fighting! Cause that's what they did in medieval time! Hey, nice to meet you, Joust, 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 I challenge you, white glove slap, slap, slap. I'm sure that's gonna get a lot of raves. Ah, saved by the bell. No, seriously. The bell rings and the fighting's over and they... Um, okay, maybe not. They, they, they go into some medieval thing and grab swords. Let me guess, more jousting. Oh, goody. An angry mob. I wonder what they could possibly be doing. And seeing as how there's no hospital in medieval time, we're just going to carry the bloody body and presume he's dead. By the way, we're five minutes into this movie and we have not seen Romeo nor Juliet. So I beg the question, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Let's skip ahead. Oh goody, a masquerade party, as evidenced by the mask on top of the guy's head, and another angry mob potentially. What is this movie filled with angry mobs and sword fighting and whatnot? Where's the romance? Wherefore art thou Romeo? Ah, there he is, right there in the blue suit. While this guy is ranting about something that... Is it just me, or do I not get the Shakespearean language in this? What is he exactly ranting about? Ah, oh, there's Romeo. And no, this is not Zac Efron's daddy, even though he kind of looks like Zac Efron. Or Leonardo DiCaprio, who actually did partake Romeo in the 1996 version! Uh, if you want Leonardo DiCaprio to die, check that one out. Romeo tries to comfort him. Peace, Mercutio, peace. Thou talks of nothing. Thank you for summing up that rant in a nutshell, Romeo. Now let's proceed with this freaking movie. I am too bold. Oh, look. Romeo being romantic amongst the flowers, and there is Juliet. So he's staring at nothing. Nothing but stars. What could she possibly be daydreaming about? Or in this case, night dreaming, since it is the middle of the night. Oh, me. She 
speaks. I'm assuming this is their first encounter. Okay, for those who are unfamiliar with the plot, Romeo and Juliet are unrivaled rival families who absolutely despise one another, yet the two of them happen to find true love amongst each other. And they're hoping that that bondage of love can bond the two families together into one dominating package. Or something like that. I'll tell you what Montague is. It's a place! Or maybe it's a last name. I don't know. Let's move on. As you can see, you're not really missing much. It's just Romeo trying to lure Juliet. And... He gazes upon his inner glory. Oh, great. Sir wines a lot. Is at it again, folks. Does Romeo have more than one set of clothes? I mean, seriously, it's like he's wearing the same shit every scene in his godforsaken movie. Just be the fat lady singing! Because you know what they say, it ain't over till the fat lady sings! Except she ain't gonna be singing in this one. Oh, I get it. This is medieval for uh, construction workers gazing at a babe and ridiculing her. Kind of. <laughs> I think they've had one too many. Of course, I don't know if they drink in medieval time. Romeo has a private conversation with said fat lady who is telling her about Juliet. While they pray at a cathedral church. Or maybe a Catholic church, I don't know. Some kind of church they're praying. You know what they should be praying for? A better president! I'm sorry, I have to freaking mention this because I'm sick and tired of hearing about Donald Trump. Dear God, will you please get a worthy candidate worthy of taking down Trump in 2020? Amen. What are you, Robin Hood? He gives her... He gives her... So she ends up taking it. So he was going to put it in the box for charity. She decided, you know what, screw it, keep it. I'll take it myself. <laughs> thou now need some kind of richness in life, for thou shalt not be insulted anymore by my fellow friends. Next! Oh, Jesus Christ. What's Sir Wines a lot doing now? Having a bath, I see. Or is he acting out as a royal fountain? Or maybe it's his way of doing laundry. I don't know. The guy is a mental lunatic. Cut it with something. Make it the word and a blow. Are you sensing something with this movie? We are not seeing a lot of Romeo and Juliet. And quite frankly, no one cares about this filler plot. Oh, great. Methinks I sense some hostility amongst the crowd. All right, all right, great. Another jousting duel commencing, I presume, amongst the castle of... Oh, for the love of God, will you just die already? Seriously, he has nothing to do. All he does is whine and does crazy, stupid crap. Next! All right, now we get to... Okay, we didn't need to see that. What is that? Is C-U-P... Yeah. He must be doing that in order to protect his you-know-what because he thinks he's a gorgeous man. Now this is what I'm talking about by the bad acting. Seriously. Uh, 
My grandmother can freaking do a lightsaber duel better than this! How Zoro could kick these two heinies any day? I mean, come on. They're ridiculous. They're angry. They're this is what I mean by bad acting. This is supposed to be a sword fight. And oh, by the way, what's a sword fight with thou no music? Wherefore art thou sword fighting music? To make the scene more epic. Who wants to hear dead silence amongst the sword fighting techniques? Which are absolutely pathetic, mind you. So Romeo tangles with his mortal enemy. Well, the fat lady ain't singing, but she sure is weeping of something in to Juliet. Oh, goody! They're they're rumbling in the dirt. Yeah, I'm sure Julia will love a man who deals with his problems with violence. I'm sure Trump wouldn't mind a little violence here or there, because, quite frankly, his words are pathetic, and actions do speak louder than words. How is it that neither of these two are bruising or anything when they're pounding each other to a pulp? I mean, for crying out loud, this is ridiculous. Oh, goody! He's going for the kill. Or at least he thinks he's going for the kill, except he'll be on the other end of that kill. As Romeo grabs the dagger and delivers the blow. Look at that facial expression. Oh, come on, he barely touched the guy! How did the... Timber! Are you fucking kidding me? He barely touched the guy and he killed him with the sword. Again, ridiculous! Alright, now, I'm sure you want to hear the dramatic conclusion of this one because... There is a plot, except it kind of backfires, because Romeo, his brain not being as great as his heart, or his muscularity, or whatever the hell he's got, presumes that Juliet is dead even though she's pretending to die. She took some sleeping potion or something to make her fall asleep, except Romeo thinks she's dead. So what does he do? He... Thinks she's dead, and so he tries to join her amongst the dead. Except she's not really dead. Death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath. I've had no power yet upon thy beauty. Oh, great! Don't tell me he's gonna go weeping too. Um, you know there is an old saying, and we're gonna find it right here. Yeah. Here we are. Because Romeo's about to do something. Why is he looking at the camera? Hey! What kind of a stupid actor looks at the fucking camera? You're not supposed to look at the fucking camera! Only I can look at the camera! Because I'm telling you what's happening! Why do we come to another random person who's actually dead? I'll cut to the chase for crying out loud, Jesus Christ. Never from this palace of dim light depart again. Here, here will I remain. Oh, Jesus Christ, quit your weeping. Oh, for the love of God, be a man! Sorry, Tom Hanks, this ain't baseball, but I get your point. So after he weeps for like a good two minutes or something like that, he drinks some p -p 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 poison and again, watch the acting.
Jeez, I never knew a man could have that much uh, eyeliner or something like that. Oh, we will just die already! Okay, there's no way now you could fall that quickly to your death. I mean, come on, it's gotta be more dramatic than that. So the fire comes, he's weeping immoral because, well, Romeo's dead. This, of course, awakens Juliet, and Juliet is discovering the truth that Romeo is dead. So, what does she do? Cute that scene! She tries to drink the poison. That doesn't work because it's empty. She tries to kiss Romeo, but that doesn't work. Watch this. Oh my god! People are coming! And I don't know what to do! And I don't want to be looking like I'm the one that murdered Romeo even though I did it! So what am I gonna do? Oh, I know! Use Romeo's dagger to stab herself to death! Which is exactly what she does. Cause you know a sword is a quick painful way to die. Oh no wait, that might be a gun, I don't know. Oh, happy dagger. I'm sorry, how is a dagger happy? Dagger's happy? Come on, daggers don't have feelings, it's an inanimate object. You s whatever. Again, watch the acting on this and how over the top it is. That does not like thou killing scene. It's too dramatic. And seriously, what kind of person reaches out and goes, I, 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 I can't see. I, 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 Conveniently falls on top of Romeo, and then we have the proper burial. Uh, okay, what kind of funeral allows you to see the actual human body? Shouldn't they be like in a casket or something? Of course, we are talking about medieval times. Burn up! Burn up! The priest who attend, uh, not attends, he does attend. He recites the funeral. Is pissed off at the two families because wow. this is what happens when the two families get together. The two children sacrifice their love for each other in dying, and thus the families are left to be so shocked and ashamed. And if you think that's bad enough, and the acting's over the top. Look at them. Deep sorrow. Depressed. De okay, why do we need to see the two dead bodies? Seriously, we get it. They're dead. Why do we need to show them? And after giving that rant, by the way... What the hell's up with that wardrobe? He walks away, and so we pick up the two deceased and move on with our lives. Wait, 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 wait. You cut the movie that short like that? That was a brief ending. So that is the 1960 version of Romeo and Juliet. Well, I'll admit there's some good scenes, and the dramatic ending is there. There's too much filler to freaking make it a two-hour fucking movie. Because, quite frankly, I don't care about what happens with the rest. I care about what happens with Romeo and Juliet. And you don't really get to see him as much in his movie. That's too much filler crap. And the acting at times is well over the top. Especially on all those death scenes. So while it's a good movie, it's not a great movie. There's just way too much going on. And the reason why is because... You got way too much filler crap to make it a two-hour fucking movie. Just cut to the chase. Romeo falls in love with Juliet. The two fall in love and die for one another in order to be true of their love. Hence, the families are mourning. The end! That's as simple as that. You don't need all that other filler crap to make it a long-ass movie and a sleeper. Literally. So, if you're willing to overlook all of that, check out this version of Romeo and Juliet. However, I would strongly recommend other versions of it. Like, well, I don't know, the one involving Leonardo DiCaprio, because you love seeing him die, don't you? 
So yeah, that that's that. Check that one out. Or if you're looking for something else William Shakespeare related, I recommend Kenneth Branagh as Hamlet. That one is a timeless classic. And oh, by the way, Kenneth Branagh is a legitimate actor. Uh, these two really didn't do much after this. So if you must watch it, check it out. Otherwise, it's not really worth your time. I'm the Commander Xander. I remember it's on the Sounds great. Good night to it. Neither should you.